pet dryer will drastically speed up the drying process. Today I'll demonstrate how to use a high velocity pet dryer to straighten your dog's fur and give them that real fluffy look they get when they come home from the groomers. This is my high velocity pet dryer I purchased from Amazon a couple of years ago. It has a couple of different heat settings. It has high heat, low heat, and no heat, which is what I use during summer. This here is a switch to turn the dryer on and off. And the dial next to it is used to increase the speed of air. You can dial this up or down depending on how comfortable your dog is with the airflow and the noise. It also comes with a couple of different nozzles. I prefer to use this flat nozzle. Okay, so Soda's had her bath and I've dried her off thoroughly using a towel, so now I'm ready to use the pet dryer. My first tip for drying an anxious dog like Soda is to pop a ball of cotton wool in their ears to muffle the sound of the dryer. Just break up the cotton wool into a size that's just big enough to fit in your dog's ear and just place it into the surface of the ear so it doesn't fall out. My second tip is to cover their ears with a happy hoodie. This fabric band applies gentle compression which calms dogs during stressful situations and protects them from loud noises. This fabric will also help dry your dog's head and ears which is great because not many dogs like having their face dried. Not all dogs like wearing a happy hoodie, so you'll notice Soda will pour hers off at some stage during the groom, which is why I've also put cotton wool in her ears. I like to start drying the back of the dog first. The airflow isn't in their face, so they seem to tolerate it more. Start on a low speed, let the dog get comfortable with the noise, and then start drying from a distance. Once your dog is comfortable, you can slowly move closer to their body, and if they're still comfortable, you can increase the speed of the airflow. I like to be led by what the dog does and what they're comfortable with. Soda likes to be held in my arms while she gets used to the dryer, so I'm happy to hold her and be guided by her. I like to dry in an up and down motion. Drying in a circular motion can knot the coat if it's quite long. I would love to dry one section completely and then move on to the next. However, I dry whatever I can until the dog changes positions. I work around them. Keep the dryer moving and avoid staying in the one spot for too long, especially if you're using a heat setting so it doesn't overheat in one area, just like when you dry your own hair. You may be tempted to use your human hair dryer to dry your dog. However, dog skin is a lot thinner than human skin, which means our hair dryers can easily dry out their skin or worse, burn them if they're on a heat setting. They're also not as powerful as high velocity pet dryers and they work a little bit differently. High velocity pet dryers, like what I'm using today, uses force to remove water from their hair, whereas human hair dryers evaporate the water from the hair's surface, which is why you can easily dry out your dog's skin. Once the back is dry, or nearly dry, I like to dry the back legs and tail. See how I'm holding Soda? I have my hand holding her under her belly. I'm only holding her very gently, so she can move away if she wants to, I'm not restraining her. My hand under her belly and her head under my arm makes her feel safe. And my hand under her belly also discourages her from sitting down, which dogs tend to do when you dry their back legs, tail and bottom. Here's a close up so you can see the force of the high velocity pet dryer. My dryer is on the lowest setting and you can still see the force of the air dries through the thick fur to soda's skin. Another tip for home groomers, and particularly if you're grooming an anxious dog, is to place your grooming table against a wall. This means you'll have one less side of the table to worry about your dog jumping off if they get scared. You'll see Soda's jumped back into my arms again, which is fine, so I'll continue to dry her back, tails, legs and bottom while holding her. Another advantage of using the high velocity pet dryer to dry your dog is the force of the air can loosen any knots and mats you come across. So if it loses them, it means they'll be much easier to brush out later once the dog is fully dry with the slicker brush. Soda's feeling a little bit more comfortable now. She's come back out of my arms and stepped back onto the grooming table. 
Another tip for home groomers is to use a slip lead and tie it to the top of the grooming table using a slip knot to help keep your dog still. It's much safer than using the grooming noose that comes with your grooming table because if your dog accidentally falls off the table, the knot will quickly release without hurting them. I'll link to my video where I demonstrate how to tie a slip knot. This is a better angle to demonstrate how I blow dry the back legs, tail and bottom. See how I have my hand underneath her belly and between her legs to try and stop her from sitting? And I also move my hand to move her tail out of the way so I can dry her bottom and the inside of her legs. I do find it difficult to dry dog's bottoms completely as most dogs I groom are sensitive to air on their bum. See how Soda tries to sit down when I lift her tail to dry her bottom? Don't worry about it, it will eventually dry so don't be too fussy. To straighten the fur and get that floppy look your dog has when they come home from the groomers, hold the dry in one hand and a slicker brush in the other hand and brush the fur as you dry. Just like you would brush your hair as you dry it, this technique separates the fur allowing more airflow to each strand which allows it to dry quicker. Brush and dry from the skin to the ends of the fur. And once you've finished an area, fill it with your hand to double check the coat is completely dry from the skin and not just the tips of the fur. Otherwise the coat will go wavy within a couple of days. Now I'm just finishing off drying the back legs. Soda has climbed my arms again, but it's put her in a great position for me to be able to dry the front of her back legs, the insides of her legs, as well as her belly. Next up is the front legs. I'm going to lower the airflow of the dryer and remove the nozzle to reduce the noise because Soda doesn't like air on her front feet. Not all dogs can tolerate this method of drying, which is fine. It's all about grooming for home comfort. I have two dogs I groom, one of which is mine, Poppy, who you'll see in the background of this video, that won't let me use a high velocity dryer on them, which is fine. I let them air dry before I clip them. It just means the grooming process takes a little bit longer and their coat will dry with a wave in it and it won't be straight, which is fine. With Poppy, I groom her over a few days. I'll wash her one day and let her dry that day and then clip her the next day once her coat is dry. You'll notice I'm giving Soda a scratch behind her ears and also under her neck as I dry her. This is to keep her calm, but also to distract her because I know she doesn't enjoy me drying her legs. This hasn't distracted her for long, as you can see, she's now moving around the table, but that's all right. Another way to keep her still so you can dry her legs is to lift the opposite leg to the one that you're drying. And it also gives you a really good angle so you can dry the inside of their leg. As I get closer and closer to drying Soda's face, she tolerates the dryer less. So to dry her chest, I start with her front legs and I slowly move closer towards her chest. And to distract her, as well as to straighten her fur, I use my slicker brush. As you can see, brushing her didn't distract her too much, so I've moved on to treats. Here I have a dental chew. It's one of Soda's favorite treats and it also takes her a little while to eat it, which means in theory she should be distracted for longer. As I offer it to her to chew, I quickly try to dry her chest. As you can see, she's onto me and my other dog Poppy has seen the treat and has popped her head up to get in on the action. As she eats it, I continue to dry her shoulders, which is still a little bit wet, as well as her chest. Now that she's finished her chew, she quickly lets me dry her neck underneath where the slip lead has been. She seems a lot calmer and is tolerating me finishing off drying the rest of her chest. I leave drying the head until last because not many dogs I know like having their head blow dried and if I leave it until last the fur will air dry a bit anyway. 
If your dog doesn't like you drying their head, just let them air dry and once you've clipped their body, their head will be dry enough for you to groom. Soda absolutely loves peanut butter, so I've left a little bit in the container for her to lick while I attempt to dry her head. To distract or just to reward your dog, you could give them one of their favorite treats or perhaps a lick mat or even their favorite toy. You want this experience to be a positive one for you and your dog, so make sure you reward them with treats and praise throughout the groom. If you haven't already lowered the speed of your dryer and removed the nozzle, you might want to do that now if your dog is a little bit scared. This will decrease the airflow and also the noise of the dryer. Start with drying from a distance and if they tolerate it, you can come in a little bit closer. Here I lift up Soda's head by lifting up the peanut butter so I can dry it underneath her neck and also behind her ears. Poppy has sniffed out the peanut butter, so I give her a little lick as well. While Soda's distracted with her whole face inside the peanut butter container, I brush and dry her ears. When drying the face, come from the side and direct the airflow down their muzzle and under their chin. Avoid pointing the air directly on the front of their face as this can irritate their eyes and their nose. When drying the ears, I like to brush them at the same time to separate the hair and speed up the drying process. I also like using the slicker brush as a bit of a distraction. If Soda's paying attention to me brushing her, I think she's paying less attention to the dryer. The ear fur can get tangled really easily by the high velocity pet dryer, especially if your dog has really long ear fur, so dry from above the ear, angling the air downwards. Soda won't let me do this, so I'm drying in an up and down motion. Luckily for her, I've layered the fur on her ears so it's not that long, which helps it not get tangled. Avoid drying in a circular motion, as this can create knots easily. It can be difficult drying the fur underneath your dog's chin and also the inside of their ears. So does cooperating at the moment, which is great. She's letting me point the air underneath her face and seems to be enjoying it. I try not to make any sudden movements as this might scare her and she'll stop tolerating it. Okay, I'm satisfied this is as dry as I'm going to get Soda's face, so I'll just let her air dry for now and I'll show you later how fluffy her coat looks when she's fully dry. Soda's back from having a big nap on the couch and you can see her face is completely dry now. Look at how straight and fluffy her coat is. It's so soft to touch. And now she's ready for me to clip her fur, which I'll demonstrate how to do that in my next video. Thanks for watching and I hope some of these tips and tricks will help you dry your dog.